2D platformers are definitely one of the most popular video game genres for not only players, but also game developers. Just look at how many Game Jam entries are 2D platformers. So in this brand new series, Mario Maker Deconstructed, we're going to be taking a look at level mechanics from Super Mario Maker 2, a 2D platformer that has quickly become one of the most celebrated games of this year, and attempt to recreate them in the Unity game engine. In this first episode, we'll be taking a look at the on-off switches and dotted line blocks found in Mario Maker. When hit by Mario, on-off switches transform red and blue dotted line blocks into outlines or vice versa. Here's a basic outline of how we can recreate the function of these switches and blocks in Unity. We need to create a switch that changes the value of a bool each time it collides with the player from below, change the sprite of the switch depending on the bool's value, Create a simple recoil animation for when the switch is hit. Create red and blue blocks that change sprites depending on the bool's value. And disable or enable the collision of the red and blue blocks depending on the bool's value. Before I began, I had to lay the groundwork for the project. I made this basic sprite sheet with all the sprites I would need and created a simple 2D platformer controller using rigid bodies that I'll be using throughout the series. And with that, I could finally begin. I started off by creating a switch and giving it a 2D box glider. Because I wanted to create a bone-based animation of the switch recoiling when it's hit, I made an object that's a child of the switch and gave it a sprite render component rather than putting the sprite render on the switch itself. By animating the child object instead of the actual switch, the switch's glider won't be moved during the recoil animation, which will prevent collision issues from happening. After that, I made a script for the switch and created a bool called isOn. To detect if the switch was hit from below, I used onCollisionEnter2D and made an if statement to check if the player collider's maximum y-axis bound was below the switch's position, and if the x-axis bounds of the player were at least partly within the x-axis bounds of the switch. And if this statement was true, I would set isOn to equal the opposite of its current value. To get the child object of the switch, I used transform.getChild0.GameObject, which returns the first child of an object. Then, if isOn is true, I set the child object sprite to the on switch sprite, and if isOn is false, I set the child object sprite to the off switch sprite. This method works fine if you only have a single on off switch in your scene, but if you have multiple switches, their isOn values won't be linked. So, to fix this, I created a new script called switch controller with the isOn bool and a public void called flip switch. When flip switch is called, I set isOn to equal the opposite of its current value, and instead of having that line in the switch script, I would simply call the flip switch function instead. Then I move the code that changes a sprite into the update function, and set isOn to equal the same value as the isOn in the switch controller script. Now every switch in the scene will get its isOn value from the same place, so you can have as many switches as you want in the scene, and they will all be linked. After that, I made a simple bone-based recoil animation for the switch and played it on collision with the player. I added a sound effect that plays then as well. Now the switches were fully functional so I could move on to the red and blue dotted line blocks. I started by creating a red block and giving it a sprite renderer and a 2D box glider. Then I made a script for the red block. I created another isOn bool and set its value to the value of isOn in the switch controller script. If isOn was true, I enabled the blocks collider and set its sprite to the red block sprite. If isOn was false, I disabled its collider and set its sprite to the red outline. I then made a similar script for the blue block, but enabled its collider and set the sprite to the blue block if isOn was false, and disabled the collider and set the sprite to the blue outline if isOn was true. The last thing I did was make the block semi-transparent when disabled, just because I thought it looked nicer. And with that, I was finally finished, so I made a small puzzle using the dotted line blocks and on-off switches. The 
If you're interested in checking out the project, you can find the link to the project's GitHub repository in the description. As always, I hope this video was fun to watch and maybe even taught you a few things, and if you have any feedback or suggestions for future content, feel free to let me know in the comments. That's everything, so thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.